Now, our Father, as we finish up our prayer time, we commit all these things to you. And we pray, Father, for tonight, for the lesson that you would be honored again and that you would equip us and encourage us to trust you, to know you, and to rely upon you. So we give these things to you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, we are continuing our series on the reliability of the Bible. And this is uh, part three and subset part seven. So part three, then part seven of the internal test. And uh, we've been looking at these three tests, the external, the uh, bibliographic, and of course now the internal test that every ancient document does have to go through. And uh, thus far we've talked about a lot of different things uh, in this series. Uh, in this part we've looked at uh, fulfilled prophecy. Is the Bible reliable when it comes to continuity? Does it make sense? Things like that. And of course, the answer is yes to all of the above. We looked at a few specific prophecies too. Uh, Ezekiel 26, the prophecy about Tyre, T-Y-R-E. And then last time we looked a little bit at the fall of Israel and Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD. And how Jesus prophesied about that and how it came to be completely fulfilled to the letter, to the T. And now we come to Jesus himself, and this is where we left off. We read a little bit out of Matthew 5 and mentioned, of course, Luke 24 and 1 Corinthians 15. And saw that how he said he came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Not to destroy it, but to fulfill it. And we have to ask the question, what does that mean? What does it mean? And we talked a little bit again about how it means that he fulfilled the prophecies. But he also fulfilled the types, the pictures, the imagery that is also in the Old Testament with regards to who he is. So we're going to now go to letter, little sub letter I <laughs> and see where he fulfilled the types. Now we have to define what we're talking about. What does it mean when we see in the scriptures the word type? T Y P, type. We don't see the word type. Don't see the word type? No. We, well, you we see, see shadow, you see... Yeah, we see, yeah. You know, there's typology, and there's sometimes that is Well, there's so much saying. There is typology, there's yeah. shadow. And to describe that, we use the word type for right. shadow. And when you get... When you move through the Old Testament into the New, and then you look back, you see how Joseph mm -hmm. was a type. Yep. You see how Joseph... And the drama that took place with mm -hmm. his brothers and his dad. Right. They came the first time. They didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. They came again. Then they knew who he was. Look, we see that's mm -hmm. going to be fulfilled. Jesus came the first yep. time. Israel didn't know who yep. he was. Yep. When he comes the second time, they will know who mm -hmm. he is. So that's why we see David mm -hmm. as the king. David, and David, that's yep. used in scripture. Uh, we see Adam. Mm -hmm. yep. First Adam? Last Adam. Last Adam. Yep. I mean, you could list probably hundreds. Oh, yeah. There's hundreds of types or typology, pictures, images, shadows in the Old Testament Isaac. with regard to Christ. Isaac. Uh, Ishmael Abraham. and Isaac. Yeah, Ishmael and Isaac. Firstborn, and secondborn. <coughs> and the sacrifice of it, or right. potential sacrifice of right. Isaac. You know, so there's so many of these pictures, yeah, I these images. Yeah, pictures. It's, you know, we, we would define a type as a person or an event that foreshadows Christ in some way, somehow. And his work, his life. Uh, the Exodus is a type. It's a picture. Of course, Jesus came out of Egypt. Israelites came out of Egypt. Joseph was mentioned. Um, he was you know, hated by his brothers. <laughs> you know, sold for the price of a slave. What happened to Jesus? You know, it's the same thing that happened to Christ, of course, too. And, and there are, I mean, you could literally do... Years and years and years of study just on that. The tabernacle and temple were type, a picture of Christ. Even the book of Hebrews says, you know, the, the veil was rent. That's referring to his flesh. You know, to, to peer into the most holy place. So we're going to look at some of these. And uh, one of those that we're going to look at is in Leviticus. So Leviticus. Like patterns, or patterns. Patterns. So what's, what's the Jewish word? For, what's that? Um, oh, Midrash. Midrash. What happened um, before happens again. Uh, Midrash is a... Is, is a study. Yeah. Uh, it's because I did a little bit of study on, on the word itself, and it's a little bit different than types. Yeah, it is. But it's it's the way the Hebrew mind looks mm -hmm. at it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, but it's, it's a pattern. Yeah. So, like prophecies can have a pattern fulfillment, multiple times near, right. far, and then even beyond that. Right. Or double fulfilling. Or... Mm -hmm. But we're gonna look at the sacrifices. Leviticus one through five. Now we're not gonna look at all five of them tonight. We're gonna take these one step at a time. Leviticus twenty three. And now we're going to look at chapter 1 first. Okay. Chapter 1. We will get to Leviticus 23. We'll look at the feasts in the future, Lord willing. But we're going to look at the sacrifices. Now, in Leviticus 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, you have the five offerings under the law, under the Mosaic Covenant. You have the burnt offering, the grain offering, the peace offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering. And each one of these foreshadows the sacrifice of Christ, some way, somehow. Now, sometimes these things can be taken too far. I mean, you can give a warning there. Some people see things that are just really, really strange and odd, and they take it beyond what it needs to be. But nonetheless, it doesn't deny the truth that these things do actually exist in Scripture. So we'll look at Leviticus 1. Now, we will read all these chapters, and then we'll just go back and then look at highlights of some of this stuff. <coughs> so Leviticus chapter 1. This is the laws for the burnt offering. Now, some of the verses we may skip because... They're a little repetitive, but I want you to get the idea here. The Lord called Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting the tabernacle, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of livestock from the herd or from the flock, goats or lambs, that is, that's how it would have been separated, or even ox too. If his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he shall offer a male without blemish. He shall bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting, that he may be accepted before the Lord. He shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. I hope you're already seeing kind of a picture here. Then he shall kill the bull before the Lord, and Aaron's sons, the priest, shall bring the blood and throw the blood against the sides of the altar, and at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Then he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. And the sons of Aaron and priests shall put fire on the altar and arrange wood around the fire. And Aaron's sons of priests and the priests shall arrange the pieces and the head and the, the fat on the wood that is on the fire on the altar. But its entrails and its legs shall be washed with water. And the priests shall burn it all on the altar as a burnt offering, a food offering, with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If his gift for a burnt offering is from the flock, <coughs> from the sheep or the goats, he shall bring a male without blemish, shall kill it the north side of the altar before the Lord, and Aaron's sons and the priests shall throw his blood against the sides of the altar. He shall cut it into pieces with its head and its fat, and the priest shall arrange them on the wood so that it's on the fire of the altar. But the entrails, again, the legs, shall be washed with water. And the priest shall offer it, all of it, and burn it on the altar. It's a burnt offering, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And he goes on and says that the burnt offering is of birds, because if you're poor, you couldn't bring a goat, you couldn't bring a bull, you couldn't bring an ox, you couldn't bring a sheep, you bought a, basically a turtle dove or pigeon, which is what the text talks about here. He shall bring the offering of turtle doves or pigeons, and the priest shall bring it to the altar, wring off its head, and burn it on the altar. His blood shall be drained out the side of the altar, he shall remove the crop. Its crop with the end, the contents and cast it beside the altar on the east side in a place for the ashes. He shall tear open its wings, but it shall he shall not sever it completely. And the priest shall burn it on the altar in the wood and on the fire. It's a burnt offering, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. So here we have the first offering in the book of Leviticus, which was of course for the Levites, the priests. So the burnt offering was for general sins, just a basic sin offering. But what parallels do we see here that foreshadow the sacrifice of Christ? Okay, so let's look at some of this. This uh, animal had to be without blemish. Of course, this goes back to Passover, by the way. What does without blemish mean? It's perfect. It's perfect. It's 
far as the human eye could tell, it was perfect. Right. Well, the human eye could tell. It didn't have like three ears. No. You know, one eye, three legs. The tail wasn't you know missing. <laughs> you know, it didn't have a you know big scar on the side or anything like that. You know, it didn't walk like this. <laughs> like it have a nervous is. tick or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, of course, the bull, the cow. You know, you know, would have had to have you know, proper horns if it was a male. It had to be inspected, of course. The priest had to inspect it and say, yes, this is good for the offering, or no, this is not good for the offering. So we see there's value as well. And this was voluntary. It was voluntary. Christ volunteered. He volunteered, but also, too, it's, it's, it's his offering for sin. Well, yeah. No, the bull didn't. <laughs> the bull didn't volunteer. The animals didn't volunteer. They were drafted. Yeah, they were drafted. But Jesus wasn't drafted. They were led astray. They were led astray. Come on, let's go over here. We're going we're gonna to warm ourselves by the fire. <laughs> no, but we see this, this animal was pure. And we know that Jesus himself was pure. Without sin. Even Pontius Pilate said, I find no fault in him. And that's parallel to these offerings we see in Leviticus. So the animal was inspected. Jesus himself was inspected. You know, the Passover lamb was too. Three days. Three days? Four days. Yeah, that's right. Four days. Four days. But also, too, think back to that Passover. You have a cute little lamb in your house. You got kids. What's going to happen? Daniel would have a fit. He'd say, oh. Daddy, I hate you. Daddy, I hate Dan you. Daniel would not be happy with Daddy. No, because <laughs> he loves animals. Yes, he does love animals, and he would have been heartbroken if he would have had to have seen his, in his mind, his pet lamb yeah. slaughtered. Well, no kid has barked since so that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but also, too, we see that you are supposed to pick your best from the herd. Your prize bull, so to speak. Your best ewe lamb that maybe grows the best wool. The goat that gave you the most milk. Part of it was faith. So that's also an aspect of this here too. So we see it's pure. We see there's faith involved. But we also see what, what did the individual have to do with his hand? What did he do? Put his hand upon the burnt offering. He put his hand on the burnt offering. Why? To be accepted to make an atonement. To make an atonement. Because symbolically, that animal took your sin in your place. That's the only place we have limited atonement. <laughs> it was very limited atonement. One, year. <laughs> one time. Well, this is one time. Yeah. You blew it again, you got to bring yeah. another animal. But on the day of the <laughs> atonement, it was for a year. But yeah, here it was limited. This is very limited to one sin. Yeah. You know, so we see this propitiation, so to speak, this atonement, right. dying in the place of another. This was limited. The guilt less. The guilt less for the guilty. Right. And Peter talks about that. The just for the unjust. Right. So we see that pictured here in the burnt offering. And also, too, the entire offering was used some way, somehow. This animal didn't just give, you know, part of its fur, you know, or a hoof. You know, or an ear, or, you know, it, it was all in. <laughs> the animal died. Yeah, it's like the chicken and the pig in the farm. Let's have bacon and eggs for breakfast. Mm -hmm. The chicken says, well, for me, that's just a gift, but for mm -hmm. you, that's a sacrifice. Yep. yep. The pig's got to die. The pig's got to die for there to be bacon. The, the that's all right, isn't it, Kevin? <laughs> Good with it. <laughs> You know, so this animal was all in. Yeah. And of course, Jesus was all in in his sacrifice, too. Yeah. Since we're talking about parallels, I'm not sure if this would be one. Of okay. Them, but 14 talks about God. 14, and of okay. course, the Holy Spirit as a dove that came down in the form of a dove. Mm -hmm. I would say it's a little bit of a different context. Because uh, this is an offering, in one sense. It's an interesting thought. Yeah. Interesting thought. You know, maybe maybe worthy of further study. You know, but uh, the, it's talking about the sacrifices, although you know, there may be a connection. Interesting thought, like I said. 
So do some further study on that, and then let me know next week. And I'll get back to you. Yeah. <laughs> Got anything else? Any other any other uh, parallels that you may want to see here that you that may be the, the case there? Well, this offering was flayed. Flayed. Okay. What is flayed? It. Wow. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. And Jesus' back was mm -hmm. flayed. Flayed. The offering was beaten, so to speak, and yep. Jesus himself was beaten. They're trying to give us some blemishes. Hmm? They're trying to give us some blemishes. Trying to give us some blemishes. But note also, too, in particular when it comes to the, the pigeon, they were supposed to take its head off, but they weren't supposed to do too much to it. No. Because part of the offering, and again, this goes back to Passover, you're not supposed to break the bones yeah. within the offerings themselves. As a picture, of course, who's picture of Christ whose bones were not broken when he was crucified as the Lamb of God who came to take away the sin of the world. Any further insights here? Anything else? Okay, so there's the, the burnt offering. That's chapter one. Let's read chapter two. This is the grain offering. Grain offering. Verse one. <clears throat> when anyone brings a grain offering as an offering to the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour. He shall pour oil on it and put frankincense in it. And bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, and he shall take from it a handful of fine flour with and oil with all of its frankincense. And the priest shall burn this as its memorial portion on the altar, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. But the rest of the grain offering shall be for Aaron and his sons. It is most holy. It is a most holy part of the Lord's food offerings. When you bring a grain offering baked <clears throat> in the oven as an offering, it shall be unleavened loaves of fine flour mixed with oil or unleavened wafers smeared with oil. And if your offering is a grain offering baked on a griddle, it shall be a fine flour unleavened mixed with oil. You shall break it in pieces and pour oil on it. It is a grain offering. And if your offering is a grain offering cooked on a pan, <laughs> it shall be made of fine flour with oil. And you shall bring the grain offering that is made of these things to the Lord, and it shall be presented to the priest. He shall bring it to the altar. And the priest shall take from the grain offering <clears throat> its memorial portion and burn this on the altar, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. But the rest of the grain offering shall be for Aaron, for his sons, it is the most holy part of the Lord's food offerings. Verse 11. No grain offering that you bring to the Lord shall be made with leaven, for you shall burn no leaven nor any honey as a food offering to the Lord. As an offering of first fruits, you may bring them to the Lord, but they shall not be offered on the altar for a pleasing aroma. You shall season all your grain offerings with salt. You shall not let the salt of the covenant with your God be missing from your grain offering with all your offerings you shall offer salt if you offer a grain offering of first fruits to the Lord you shall offer for the grain offering for your first fruits fresh ears roasted with fire crushed new grain and verse 15 you shall put on it and lay frankincense on it it is a grain offering and the priest shall burn it as a memorial portion sell the crushed grain with some of the oil, with all of its frankincense, it is a food offering to the Lord. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Great detail when it comes to grain. So, first of all, let's consider this offering here. Now, remember, these offerings are things for the Israelites. God gave them in the law. It is part of their culture because they were slaves in Egypt and they had to know what to do, what to expect. Because they saw all kinds of pagan worship. They never got over the cow. Hmm? <laughs> Never got over the cow. And now the Lord is saying, okay, this is who I want you to be as my people and how you are supposed to offer sacrifices unto me. And here he's talking about the grain offering. Now this was to show honor or respect to God in worship and part of an acknowledgement that all we have is his too. Because remember, this was an agricultural society. You bring your grain, you bring your first fruits, that's the best, again. Again, that shows faith that you're trusting the Lord to provide for you after that. And 
not only does this show again that Jesus gave all for us, but what are some other parallels we see here? Now, remember when studying scripture, one thing that you can look for is repeated words to help you understand the text. What are some repeated words that we find in here? We find oil. Oil. Frankincense. Frankincense. Flour. Flour. Of course, the Lord's name is repeated over. Lord's name, of course, yes. Made by fire. Yep, fire. Uh, Unleavened. Unleavened. What else? Offering, yep. What else? Pleasing. Pleasing. Aroma. Pleasing aroma. Grain. Yeah, we see a lot of words repeated here. Now, of course, part of it's because they're, if you cook it with this, if you cook it with this, if you cook it like this, then use this and things like that. But we see, also see salt yes. as well. So let's think about some of these things. What is frankincense? Expensive. Expensive. Goes with myrrh. Goes with myrrh. <laughs> Was only used in their worship. They were not to mix them together as a perfume Correct. for themselves. And gold, frankincense, and myrrh were given to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if the wise men or the Magi knew the Old Testament well enough to know what they were doing. I suspect they probably knew something yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah, because it was the worship. They yeah. worshiped the king and they knew it. Yep. So they brought things that were for. Mm -hmm. A king. Yeah. Gold, mm -hmm. frankincense, and myrrh. Mm -hmm. And if, I think they knew because they said, Where is he that is born, born king, king of, of the, the Jews? Jews. Yeah. Yeah. So this was worship. Mm -hmm. It was to be done only in worship of God. You could not use it outside right. that. It was forbidden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they used frankincense also in the altar of incense. Yes. And it's from what I, I've never smelled it burning, but I've heard it smells pretty good. Sweet. Sweet. It's a sweet smell. So when it says a sweet aroma, <laughs> it literally right. means a sweet aroma to the Lord. You know, so frankincense, yes, was expensive. It was to be only be used in worship. You know, you could not say, I think I'm going to put my frankincense perfume on today. And I didn't know. No, because that was a defiling of that. And it was against what God's law would have said. And again, the, the, the Magi brought frankincense to Jesus. When he was probably about two years old-ish, yeah. as an act of worship, yes. along with the myrrh and the gold. And of course, that's also partly how the family funded themselves when they went down to Egypt to escape Herod, because it was a precious thing. They may have had relatives in Egypt. Perhaps. Because Perhaps. Of the, of but they also had to travel, too. They Egypt. had to travel. You know, so those, those things that they were given would have been helpful. Okay, so we see the, the frankincense here. You know, and we see the parallel, of course, with... The, the, the giving of worship to Jesus after years or so after he was born. Okay, what else? The sacrifices were all done for the glory of God. Yeah, sacrifices were all done. said God. after each sacrifice that it's a sweet savior unto the God, unto the Lord. Yeah. Like that the first chapter and also in the second chapter in verse 9. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, was for, it was for him. It wasn't the people had to do something to find favor with the Lord, but it was the Lord who wanted this because of, of the obedience mm -hmm. that they would obey what, right. he, what he wanted. If they wanted to have favor with him, they had to be obedient to him. Yeah. Yeah. This is the way I want it done. Do it this yeah. way. Right. And yeah. there is no other way. And, no. and you know, this is where because I said so. <laughs> yeah. Because I said so. This word because I said so. Yeah. Yes, this is right. God said because God said so. Said so. <laughs> and we, yes, it was for him. This, this, this is not something that people cooked up. No pun intended. No. <laughs> no. This, this is something the Lord said. This is how I want you to do. This is a specific prescribed way of worship. This is how I want it done. Not just as empty ritual. I want your heart to, because He deals deals with that in the prophets. That this is what it's supposed to be. And Jesus was the only way. This was the only exactly. way. Exactly. Here is the way I want you to worship. Here's the sacrifices. Just as Jesus is the only sacrifice. Okay, what about some of these others? What about the oil? What about the word oil? Probably would have been olive oil. Yeah. Very common in, that, in the culture over there. Or some form of that. I mean, there's other oils too. But, and there's 
I don't know, there's, I don't know how many types of olives there are over there. When I yeah, was okay. over there one time, I went to the store, and there's just like shelves yeah. of olives of different colors. I'm just like, what? <laughs> I think of green and black, you know? Yeah. <laughs> there's lots of different kinds yeah. of olives. I had no clue until I saw that. So, and you now some may connect this with the Holy Spirit. I, I don't think that's really the case here. No. Yeah. Um, but it's part of the recipe. Yes. Part of the recipe. Now, some things may be a little bit of a mystery, and again, we don't want to press, no pun intended again, when it comes to olives too far. I'm doing a lot of puns tonight. But we need to, you know, just consider these things, you know, oil and flour, but not just flour. What does it say? Fine flour. Again, the best flour you have. Now, let me ask you, how did they get flour in those days? You milled it. Yeah. They didn't buy it at the store. No, you may have been able to go to market and get some of it sometimes. But most of the time, you made it yourself. Which requires work. Requires, again, sacrifice. But I and, think and, of oh, fine flour. I think of a flour you can buy to bake cakes with. It's mm -hmm. called cake flour. Cake flour, okay. And it's very, very fine. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like a powder yeah. compared to regular, even self-rising flour. Mm -hmm. It's totally different yeah yeah and there's another aspect to this too look at verse uh, 3 the rest of the grain offering shall be for Aaron and his sons it is most a most holy part of the Lord's food offerings so they were to eat the priests were to eat part of this too it's part of how they would, would be taken care of right. because they didn't have land they had some cities but the priests didn't have land. Now, eventually they did end up growing some crops and stuff like that historically. But originally, they were supposed to be taken care of by the people. The religious leaders were to be taken care of by the people. Now, there's some parallels to that also when it comes to the New Testament regarding um, you know, leaders and stuff like that. But it's interesting this was to be consumed. And there's some other offerings, too, where the priests would consume them. Don't muzzle the ox. Right? Don't muzzle the ox, right. You know, so we also see that there's this internal taking of these offerings. Well, just as we are to trust in Christ internally. So we see that parallel too. It was to become part of their life. Part of their sustenance. And I want to make an application for, for those of us who are Christians that the Word of God is to be our sustenance too. As well as the Holy Spirit, and of course Christ, we know that. But this is what we are to eat, so to speak. Because it is his fine words, pure words, wonderful words of life that we find in the Word of God. It's interesting they took the fine flour, fine flour, flour. Yeah, say that three times real fast. Yeah. Say it again, Gary. And they poured the oil on it and put the frankincense there mm -hmm. on. So they mixed it up. Sweet cake. Yeah, made a cake. Yeah. It'd be real yeah. sweet. And they brought it this to Aaron and his son. Mm -hmm. And they took the handful of flour there of it and burned it. Mm -hmm. They cooked it. Now this was unleavened too, which you know, we'll right. talk about real quick here too. So it would not have ra risen, raised, risen, yeah. arose. It wouldn't rise. It wouldn't rise. Yes. Like because, the rolls take on a night. Yeah, like the, the, those yummy rolls we eat at Thanksgiving and sometimes for dinner. But again, we think okay, we have to think about unleavened. Now, it's not always the case, but usually leaven is a picture of what in the Bible? Sin. Sin. It rots. It rots. It decays. And when it decays, it gives gases, and that's what causes the bread to rise. <clears throat> and Jesus said, You'll beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, the sin, the false teaching of the Pharisees. You know, so it, often, not always, there, there are exceptions. But also, too, we think of the sinlessness of Jesus. He was pure, too. So again, we see this repeated over and over again in these offerings. So he fulfilled the burnt offering, he fulfilled the grain offering. We'll finish up with this one tonight. You know, but uh, 
you know, by way of application, you know, when we worship the Lord, we should be willing to give all we are to Him too. Romans 12, 1. Yep. Therefore, because of all these things in chapters 1 through 11, offer your bodies a living sacrifice to the Lord. Acceptable, worthy, holy, and don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so as we consider these offerings, and yes, how Jesus fulfilled them, let us also think what we are offering to the Lord now. Through praise, through giving, through our life. Because of his great love for us. Not out of legalism, but out of love. Any final thoughts uh, on these two uh, offerings? These were not things out of the they had no. to do these. These were yeah, these were required. I mean, these were required. They, yep. they had no choice. Yep. I mean they had to do this. If you want to be in right standing with God, you right. have to do it. Yep. I mean some of the some of the offerings I think were in the voluntary. Yeah, there was a there was some. Yeah. yeah. But these these were required and had to do them yep. all the time. And there's a lot of bloody sheep. Yeah, and, and real quick, you know, the, the one word atonement it means to cover. Right. But again, it was only temporary. Only temporary. Right. Yeah. Do any um, Orthodox Jews still do this? Well, they don't have a place to offer right. sacrifices. That's the problem. Uh, in the 200s ish, there was a rabbi who said, well, since we can't offer the offerings, then because we're changing the custom, basically. You know, it's about good works. It's about. You know, doing good things to other people since we can't offer offerings, you know. Well, you know, we can still observe the Passover to an extent. You know, we'll still have the meal and have the lamb or chicken now, you know, but we still can't do certain things. So in order to get right with God, we have to do good works. That's why a lot of the Jews, especially in this country, are in social justice. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Good question. Well, Any Marv, final thoughts? Marv used to talk about going and to the Getting a chicken and killing it and home or something. And the, the rabbi would wave it over their head and say, "This is a kapora." Yeah, yeah. Kapora, yeah. This is a kapora. This is the covering, the atonement. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the blood was spilled. Right. Yeah. 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 So probably kind of in line with the turtle dove, where they cut the head off, they would yeah. do the same thing with the chicken. So right. it might be connected to that. I used to work for a Jewish girl who wasn't a very good Jewish girl, but her she talked about her mother that whenever. Mm -hmm. They had to remove all the leaven from their house. Oh, yeah. They yeah. had to clean everything up because she and cook this the day before because they couldn't cook on the on the day of the moment. Nope. So she yeah. would clean the house and clean everything out that mm -hmm. every little the Passover. Yeah, for the yeah. Passover. Absolutely. That's where you did spring cleaning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally, that's where that came from. Right. That right. tradition. <laughs> All right, well, if there's nothing else, we'll go ahead and finish up in prayer. But uh, as, as we as we do close, you know, let's think about what what He gave for us, the sacrifice that Christ did for us. He gave all of Himself. He was the perfect Lamb of God. He died in our place, and His sacrifice was a sweet smelling aroma to the Lord. So let us appreciate that sacrifice. Us thank him for that sacrifice I, because I, without trusting in him, we cannot have a right relationship with God. And I appreciate my ninth year old son, not having to sacrifice. That yes, <laughs> thank him. We don't have to offer sacrifices. Really I'm an animal lover, it would be hard for me. Yeah, yeah, likewise. likewise. Well, let's go ahead and close our prayer and then we will dismiss. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for your word, we thank you for your grace, we thank you, Lord, that Jesus fulfilled the types. The pictures, the images, the shadows of things that were to come, including these sacrifices. So Lord, as we just briefly skim over these things, I pray you will help us to understand your word and understand your plan, your purpose, and understand what Jesus did. So Father, we again lift up all these requests that we had previously to you and pray for your wisdom, your guidance, your strength, for your healing, for your help, and remind us of the hope we have in Christ. And Lord, for those who are watching, for those who are listening, if there are those who do not know you, I pray, Lord, they would come to know you.
because of Jesus, that they would turn away from their sin and put their faith in Christ alone, who is the final sacrifice for sin and for sinners. So Lord, we commend all this to you. We thank you and love you and praise you. And pray for this coming Sunday, and of course for next Wednesday too, and it's in the mighty name of Jesus we ask. Amen. Amen.